Hello, I am Graham and I hope everyone's having a great day and welcome to today's video. Now this video is a product review of a wireless HDMI transmitter which will transmit the HDMI signal from any HDMI device to a smartphone, tablet or even a PC. So it's ideally suited to using it with your camera. Now your camera can be on a camera crane or it can be on a camera rig. This device is so small that it doesn't add any size to your camera and the weight is only 125 grams or 5 ounces if you're non-metric. First of all, a disclaimer. This device was provided to me for review by Pergear and I'm going to put a link to their website so you can purchase this product from them. So it's the Benbox wireless transmitter from a company called Inkey and I'll put links to all this in the video description below. So it's a self-contained wireless transmitter for HDMI up to 60 frames per second 1080p. It's got a self-contained lithium-ion battery and that's the bulge on here which gives you about three and a half hours continuous runtime. It's a 2500 milliamp hour battery. The whole unit is machined aluminium and it's very well constructed. Lots of heat sinks on here to take away the heat from the transmitter. The hot shoe mount is also metal with a metal uh, locking ring. And in the base here is a quarter 20 thready mount. So you can actually put this onto a tripod if you wanted to or attach it to a rig using a magic arm or something like that. Looking around the device, you've got a HDMI input port and by the side of it is a activity LED which tells you when you've got HDMI activity. On the top of the unit we've got a power on and off switch and adjacent to that we've got the power status indicators for the lithium ion battery. Usual four stages, 25, 50, 75 and 100% capacity. By the side of that we do have the wireless indicator light to tell you when you're pairing or when you've got a wireless signal. On the other side we've got a USB uh, type A output port and that's the one which will communicate to your camera. Now this device works best with a tethered camera so if you've got a, a device which supports USB tethering such as the uh, Canon series or the EOS M50 that I'm filming this with now both support um, tethering over USB. So not only does this device uh, take the HDMI feed coming out of your camera and transmit it to your smartphone, it also has the ability for the app on your smartphone to be able to control the camera. Now it's a very basic control with some of the cameras. It depends whether it supports USB tethering or not. To change things like aperture, shutter speed, ISO and exposure compensation. But with something like this uh, Panasonic GX8, it doesn't support USB tethering, but Panasonic provide you with a lead which plugs into that USB Type-A port and gives you the capability of triggering the camera through that 2.5mm remote socket. So even though you can't control aperture and shutter speed and ISO, you can start and stop recording using the app that they provide. It may not provide much more functionality over the wireless app, the Panasonic app, the image app, but it gives you a much larger screen to view on your iPhone or your tablet so you can see whether you've got focus correct or whether your framing is correct. What I'll do now is to install the Benbox wireless transmitter on top of the Canon EOS M50. I'll connect the USB so I can control the camera functionality from the app. I'll connect the HDMI so we can see the signal coming back from the camera. And then we'll use an external audio recorder so I've got continuity of audio. When I start and stop recording, obviously we'll lose the audio recording in the camera when I stop the recording. So I've got a separate audio recorder going so I can actually record the audio and we can uh, talk through the setup on the screen. So I'll install this now and we'll show you the app on my smartphone. I'm going to show you the power on sequence for the unit. I've got a power on off button here and to turn the unit on you press the button once and release it and then press and hold the button again and you'll see that the lights indicate from the right to the left you can see now we've got 100% battery uh, capacity. You can see the, the power on off button is illuminated in blue so that tells you we've got power on and you might be able to just see here we've got the Wi-Fi uh, pulsing here to signify that we're looking for Wi-Fi connectivity. Well I've installed the transmitter on top of the camera. I've not connected the HDMI first because I want to record the in-camera picture and sound. I've got my smartphone here which is an iPhone 11s but you can download the um, Inky app 
from their website. Don't try and find it on the Play Store or the App Store, it's very difficult to find, but if you go to their website, and again I'll put a link to that in the video description below, you can actually get the um, iOS version or the Android version or the Mac OS version if you want to run this on your Mac laptop or a Windows version. I'll come back to those two other operations later in this video, but for now, if you've got Android 6 or above or iOS 10 and above, you'll be able to download this app and use it. So I'm starting the screen record. So the first thing I want to do is connect wirelessly from my smartphone to the Benbox uh, access point. And it is a wireless access point and it will support multiple devices. So you can connect multiple devices to it. You could have your smartphone, your tablet and your PC all connected simultaneously, all showing the same picture. So that's a great feature. So what I'm gonna do now is go into my settings. So I'll go into the settings screen Look for the Wi-Fi and I'll select the signal that's coming from the Benbox, which is shown here as Benbox 61032E. I'll just click on that. I've already set the password on a previous connection, so I don't have to put the password in. So it will now connect to the Benbox and get a, back, a tick on the screen, which means we're actually uh, recording. So now I'm going to go into the app. So I'll just swipe up there and across to find the app, which is the in-key app. So I'll just tap on that. And it brings up the last image which is stored as a still frame. So I was actually outside doing a test with this device. Now, we've not got a HDMI feed coming from the camera yet because I haven't plugged the HDMI cable in. So what I do is plug that HDMI cable in and we should see a feed come across to this device. The device, I lose the signal on the camera LCD screen, but I've got the picture on the app which you can see now. Now, at the moment, I've still got the camera overlaid, so I can actually check that things are happening as they should. You can probably see across the top left-hand side of the screen, I'm recording in the manual video mode. You can see the little camera icon with the M there. Adjacent to that, we've got our shutter speed, our aperture, and our current ISO. So at the moment, you can see I'm shooting at 1 50th of a second, the same parity as the frame rate f6.3 with ISO 500. I've also got face tracking, you can see the face track symbol as I move around. Now across the bottom of the app you'll see three more icons. The first one is the coloured bars which is the histogram. So if I just click on that you'll notice that pops up on screen is the histogram. It's a little bit small, could do with being a little bit bigger. Um, I don't think you can expand that at all, so it could do actually being a little bit bigger. Take that off. The next one is the zebra stripes, which gives you indication of overexposure warning. So if I tap that, you can see the zebra zone. Now, if you swipe across the screen, you can set the level that you want your zebra stripe to be recording as overexposed. There's no percentage scale there, so it's a bit of a trial and error as to what you think is overexposed. So that's zebra stripes. Um, the next uh, icon along is the uh, contrast so if I wanted black and white you just click that and you notice the screen goes into black and white mode if you just want to look at your uh, picture in black and white without being distracted by any color information the, the next icon along is the marker so if I tap that you can see we brought up the rule of thirds marker on the screen turn it off if you tap it again you'll bring up the center point and diagonal marker so depending on which application you want you can switch those on now on the end is a lookup table, um, so you can actually put on various LUT for your particular camera. So I turn that off because I'm not using any of the LUTs. Over on the left hand side you can see the camera icon, the red record button and the play and stop which uh, disconnects the HDMI signal. So if I wanted to record, and we're not actually recording from the camera at the moment, and you can't see any uh, visual clues that we're recording, I'm actually just recording the app on the smartphone and we're, we're actually playing that back in the video now if i want to record i just need to tap the red record button and that will start the camera recording via that usb tethering system so let me just tap that you now see on screen we have got indication that we've got the red record button and by the side of it is the little red dot plus rac which is coming back from the camera overlay so at the moment we're recording the video coming from the camera so you've got full functionality of controlling the aperture and shutter speed. So if I want to make this a little bit brighter, I can go from a f6.3, just tap that f6.3, and you can see I can go to f5.6. So if I go to 5.6, the video has come a little bit brighter, so that's f5.6. If I wanted to bring that back, obviously, I can just tap the ISO if I wanted to, 
and go from uh, the current 500 to 400 and that will take that scene back dark again. So you've got full control over shutter speed, aperture and ISO. And again, dependent on the mode you've selected for video recording, um, you might have exposure compensation if you're in aperture priority or shutter priority or in program shift. On the top left hand side of the screen, if I just tap that, you can see it brings up information. It brings up information about your Wi-Fi, your connectivity, the current version of the software. You can see I've got the latest version of the firmware 1.1.3. It's got that green tick, which means it's downloaded and it's actually been transferred wirelessly to the Benbox transmitter. So that's a really neat feature, automatic download and install for you. Click away. The video you can see we've got the option for 720p or 1080p so if you wanted to transfer in 1080p you can click the 1080p mode the screen just flashed for a little minute and now we are sending the signal from the transmitter to this smartphone in 1080p so we should have a slightly higher resolution and the about button just tells you your current serial number and firmware so as I mentioned previously, this only really works if you've got USB tethering. Um, those cameras that do support the tethering gives you that fit functionality of being able to use the command set for your particular camera to control the application. Now it would be nice if audio was actually being transferred from the camera to your smartphone, but currently I've not found a way to do that. Uh, I haven't tried a full HDMI input, so I could use my, say, Blu-ray player and see if it transfers sound to my smartphone, but I've got a funny feeling it won't. That's maybe something the developer could look at transferring audio because that will give you an extra advantage as well. With the Panasonic Lumix GX8, which doesn't have USB tethering, I can install this cable, which is USB-A to a 2.5 millimeter tip ring ring sleeve adapter which is used by the remote socket on the camera so we just plug this into the remote socket plug this into the USB A socket on the transmitter and you can control the shutter either for stills um, if you're in stills mode or you can start stop video recording if you're in the video mode it's, it's like pressing the red button effectively to start your recording now in terms of uh, functionality, I haven't come across any issues using the app. The only issues I've had is I've tried to download both the Windows and the Mac OS versions to test it out on what it would look like on a laptop. Unfortunately, when I tried to download the Windows application, the only download available came down in Chinese. Now I managed to get through the installation by intelligently looking at what the installation looks like. When I got to the end of it, I still had a problem with the system DLL, so it didn't fully work for me under Windows. And when I tried to download the macOS version, it came up with the fact that it, the app needs to be updated as I've got the latest uh, MacBook Pro and I've also got the 27-inch um, Mac iMac. Both of those have now got the 64-bit operating system and it looks like this app is only a 32-bit development, so it didn't work on either of those devices. I have contacted the developer to find out whether there's going to be an upgrade for that and I've asked if there's going to be a feature set which allows us to use audio with this device. If I get a response before I post this video, I'll make those comments known in the video description below. So there we are, that's the Benbox HDMI wireless transmitter. Works up to 100 meters line of sight outdoors. Obviously with our lockdown situation, I've not been able to test it. I did test it earlier out in the garden and got up to about 30 meters and there was no problem with the wireless transmission at all no breakup or anything like that so it does work there now i will put links in my video to where you can actually purchase this from the Perge website and the amazon germany site whether it's going to become available on all the amazon sites that will be up to per gear um, i will email them to find out if it's going to be available on other amazon sites 
So that's it for this review. Hope you found that useful. And of course, if you're a new viewer to the channel and you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon to give you notification when I upload new videos. You can also check out my photographic blog. I'm going to put a link to that in the video description below. You'll find lots more information on mirrorless cameras, bridge cameras, and all things photographic. So do check that out. And if you like what you see there, join my monthly newsletter group, which goes out to just over 2,700 people now, every three weeks or a month, depending on how often I can get time to do that. So do check that out if you have not already subscribed to that newsletter. So as usual, thanks very much for watching. Stay safe, stay well. And as I'm recording this in the beginning of May 2020, let's hope the lockdown is eased so we don't all get out with our cameras and enjoy taking some fantastic pictures again. So until then, thanks very much for watching. Take care and bye for now.